Kelvin's time by a minute. We got to watch this. We have Kelvin here. He's ready for your questions. Where will we like? We'll start here on the left side, fifth row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Former teammate of yours, uh, Trill, now, now on the uh, Auburn defensive line. Just, just what's Auburn getting in, uh, in Trill Carter? Uh, yeah, definitely a hardworking, uh, hardworking young man. Uh, his time at UT, he showed, showed me um, a lot of his character and the way he goes about business. So definitely a hardworking and respectable young man. Stay on that row. Adam Hogburn, uh, K10 TV out of Sherman, Texas. Kelvin, I mean, just how much confidence does it give this offense that Quinn Ewers returning for his third year as the starter? Yeah, it gives you a lot of confidence, especially because um, the more you can spend time with a guy and play with him, the more you can gel with him. And e even even then, we have guys behind Quinn and, and even, like, other backups as well who, who would just gel right into our uh, playbook and scheme as well. So, so it's very exciting. Right side on the aisle. Jeff Alhorns, 24-7. Kelvin, when you look back at your sophomore year, where did you feel like you grew the most from your freshman year? And as you, you know, kind of went through the offseason, where were some things that you felt like you really wanted to work on going into your junior year? Yeah, from uh, freshman to sophomore year, I feel like the consistency of me uh, being more in tune with the game. Um, um, I felt my teammate, Jake Majors, he, kinda, he came back from a little O-line retreat, and he talked about it. He was like, do you like football? Do you love football? Or do you live football? I feel like... I'm 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 living football like I live for football. That's what this is what I want to do. So, uh, just me being uh, more in tune to film, more in tune to my technique, just different things like that, and just going into this off season, just staying consistent and just making sure I stay dominant. Left side, fourth row. Morgan Weaver with KBTX from College mm -hmm. Station. Just coming to the SEC, that means playing A and M again. What have mm -hmm. you heard about that rivalry, and are you have that game circled on the calendar this year? Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot about the rivalry. I still, um, I, I wasn't, I was too young to remember Justin Tucker uh, when he kicked the game with a kick. But I've definitely seen highlights from it, and uh, it's going to be a great rivalry. Going to be a, a great um, type of excitement just to keep that tradition going. We go on the side, third row. Kelvin Carter Yates with Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Why is Texas a good fit with the SEC conference? Uh, just just us trying to come in and, and, and gain respect from our opponents, I feel like that's the biggest thing um, for us as of coming into a new conference, just gaining the respect and, and understanding that we respect them, but we want them to respect us as well. Right here on the edge. Justin Wells, Inside yes, Texas. Good to see you, Kelvin. Yes, sir. Um, all these mock drafts are coming out for 2025, mm -hmm. and you're in the top ten in every single one of them. Yes, How are you separating that and it not being a distraction and just focusing where your feet are right mm -hmm. now on this season? Because it's got to be difficult. Yeah, you, you said it perfectly. Just be where your feet are. Uh, don't try to look too far ahead because once you do that, things will go downhill for you because uh, then it's like you're focusing on more than what you need to at the moment. Front row. Uh, Michael Cobble from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Speaking of being where your feet are, I didn't get to ask Jade about it, but how about them kicks that he had on? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, honestly, it's kind of different. Some different. I, I don't see it a lot. Uh, I got the car when we were getting ready to uh, come out here, and I'm like, I'm like what, I was just asking, what, what, like, what did he have on? So, so it was kind of, kind of pretty cool just seeing him. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of flared up and try some new stuff. Stay here on the left side. Uh, Jacob Morris, Big Trail Nation, uh, mm -hmm. joining the SEC, another rivalry. Texas gets to renew is with Arkansas, a long yeah. historic rivalry. Just how excited are you for that game? How excited are you to go to Fayetteville? Yeah, uh, I've had some teammates who played that game a couple years ago, and they talked to me about the atmosphere and all the excitement the fans bring. So, so just hearing that, I'm very excited to try to get in there and uh, just just get to get to experience the atmosphere in Arkansas. Front row. Uh, Eric Baylor with the Tulsa World. Uh, more rivalry talk. You know, as Oklahoma and Texas fan bases learn about the SEC, mm -hmm. how would you describe OU Texas to all the SEC fans? Uh, man, I'll just say two two teams who has a lot of grit and a lot of passion about their school, especially just being able to represent. I, I know most guys they stay in in town. I mean, in uh in their state. So I'm an in-state guy, and just being able to represent my family, and also just being able to represent my state as well. So uh, it's, it's a lot of it's two teams who's passionate and ready to play. Left hand side. Uh, Corey Moe with KB Sports and Austin. Nice to see you, Kelvin. Yes, sir, you too. Uh, just wanted to ask about the offensive line. Everyone's returning except the right tackle position. Mm -hmm. Just one, the guy leaving Christian, what did he teach you? Something that may come to mind when you think of that name, but then also Cam coming into that slot. What have you seen for, for him to be ready to take over? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll say the biggest thing Christian Jones taught me is just to stay consistent and not 
not dwell on the moments where you're not doing so good because uh, you're, you're not going to be perfect. Not everything is going to go how you want it to go. And just being able to focus and put that play or, or whatever is happening behind you and just focus on, on where you are now and what you're doing. And um, also with Cam, Cam, he's uh, been a guy who's uh, sit behind Christian for those two years and just being able to learn and, and learn from Christian's experiences like I did as well. So, so just, just, just I feel Cam is he's gonna be he's gonna be ready and um, he's just soaking it all in right now. Second row, uh, Chris Hummer with Twenty Four Seven Sports. Um, I know y'all lost a lot off of last mm-hmm. year's team, but I'm curious, how would you, how do you think about the talent level on this team after all the additions that were made as well? Yeah, uh, like you said, we we lost some key guys on our team um, to the NFL, which congratulations to them. But like you said, I feel like our talent wise is good because when you look when you look at the playing field while we're practicing and stuff, it's like there's no drop off. Everybody's communicating well, everybody's gelling well together. So I feel like we got a lot of depth on our team right now, and uh, we're doing pretty good. Back row on the aisle. Hey, Gallon Adam Rosso, Spectrum News, Dallas. If you were writing a scouting report on yourself, uh-huh. skills, attributes, what you do well, what would it say? Uh, on myself, I'll probably say some some pros. I would say good feet, good hands, um, willingness to learn the game, and being and the consistency in his uh, technique, no matter when he's tired or or uh, when he's fresh. You had another one in the back row. Don and Conrad, 15 ABC and Bryant College Station. Uh, you guys are going to see a lot of new road venues this season. Mm-hmm. Are there any in particular you're extra excited about for the atmosphere? No, nah, I, I, I got that question asked me uh, before as well. So uh, I'm actually excited for all of them because, uh, in my opinion, my favorite games to play are the road games because you kind of get that uh, underdog feeling when you go into that stadium and nobody's wanting you to win. So uh, I'm really excited for all of them just to get to see and experience the fans of uh, other teams. Two final questions on the end here. Uh, did you talk trash to the team when you got – the highest rating on the team when NCAA? No, I didn't, but they definitely, they did. I definitely heard it from my teammates. <laughs> I, I got, I got a little, little stuff from my teammates. So anytime I mess up on the game, they, they let me hear. <laughs> Final question on the aisle. Hey, Kelvin, when uh, in the OU game last year, when OU had that goal line stand, uh-huh. for you guys going forward, what, what changed for you guys as an O line after that and the success you guys had late in the year when Iowa State and Tech and. You know, the last two games. How do you? What did you guys focus on to mm-hmm. carry that momentum forward into this year after after the OU game? Yeah, just uh, certain our dominance. I feel like in that moment we were we were uh, kind of lackluster in that moment, as you could say. Uh, seeing that as a low line is not fun. So I feel like from that moment on we kind of understood and, and and took it personal, which which we take everything personal. We come in every game ready to play. We come in every game wanting to win. But just that moment of not being able to score in a one-yard line, that's kind of something that's like – like, like that hit us real deep, so it kind of gave us that extra extra push to, to want to fix our mistake and, and actually get in the end zone in the red zone. Kelvin, good job. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys.